a uh, very good morning all so let's uh, continue our epistemological uh, classes so today i'll be explaining about the experimental study design so uh, we were seeing the observational study design so far in our last two classes so it was descriptive and analytical now let's move on to the experimental study design so the fundamental difference between descriptive and uh, experimental study design is the investigator has a significant role in experimental design he is not observing the research instead he is actively participating or he is intervening the research or is manipulating the research not manipulating in the sense in any other sense manipulation means he is actively putting some drug into the research or he is withdrawing something uh, which uh, they were um, constantly doing uh, so the active participation of the investigator or researcher is the fundamental um, feature of experimental design which is not seen in descriptive study because a descriptive study it is uh, observing the details of the groups either it is a case group or control group or a cohort group and uh, noting the details uh, will give you the hypothesis testing but randomized control trial or experimental study the investigator has a very striking role so it is the best study design you can say that it is the best study design to test a hypothesis but in the last uh, examples like food poison and uh, smoking and lung cancer uh, in those cases we cannot do an experimental design because it is very uh, unethical to create a group with uh, smoking or create a group with uh, street food so there the only possibility is uh, case control or cohort study that we can do only observance but and uh, drug trials or any other efficacy trials relating to uh, new machineries or any uh, new tricks in these cases we can do an experimental study design because the ethical uh, issue is very uh, crucial in experimental design so uh, this take an example uh, it is a five milligram of a new drug uh, we are checking whether it will reduce the pain in cesarean patients compared to the existing neck. so in uh, this case uh, we are checking efficacy of a new drug so this is the basic uh, uh, setup for an experimental study design comparison of a new drugs or uh, any other new two methodologies whereas in uh, disease cases we cannot uh, do an experimental design because uh, we cannot do an intervention with a disease you cannot create the disease uh, and do an experiment that is uh, unethically um, unethical and it is not at all feasible so mostly uh, the disease uh, scenario will end up at uh, analytical study and it will not go to the experimental study design so we have to stop the testing of hypothesis at analytical study uh, let it be a case control cohort but uh, this type of uh, scenario we can do a experimental study design so this is uh, checking two drugs efficacy a new drug invented is it uh, good or uh, bad compared to the existing drug so the uh, common uh, design is uh, same for all because there will be uh, testing hypothesis always in a comparison group so in experimental study design the population we will uh, divide into two groups and we will check the outcome after a period of time the one group will be test group where the new drug will be uh, allotted and a group two where the existing drug will be allotted so this new treatment and control treatment allocation or intervention or manipulation is a fundamental part of or most unique part of experimental study design which was not there in the descriptive study designs and after a period of time we'll check the outcome and we'll compare the outcome and we can uh, say that which drug is good and which drug is bad 
so basically we have animal studies and human studies in experimental designs we know uh, animal studies we might have heard about rats uh, monkeys rabbits so all the drugs will be first tested in um, animals then only it will uh, go to the humans uh, how uh, unethical uh, to conduct an experiment in animals it is a matter of question but for the sake of uh, human safety we need to sacrifice animals that's what uh, it's what the only possible way to test the efficacy of a trick so first it will be tested in animals and if it is found to be efficacious then the study will be moved to humans and humans also it will go step by step first uh, the sample will be very low maybe 5 10 then it will go to 100 and it will reach 1000 and there will be surveillance trial uh, then it will come to the market if it is proven to be uh, efficacious even in the surveillance that is uh, stage 4 or drug trial type 4 so a few examples we will see how this experiment famous experiment was done by james lind it was the first one of the first experimental studies in the science so he was a naval doctor he used to go with the navies navy ships so what happened in one journey was many uh, sailors were affected with uh, one disease known as scurvy that uh, affects uh, gums uh, which was caused due to deficiency of vitamin c so till that time uh, there was no treatment for scurvy so what he did was he arranged the participants into six groups and he was uh, giving uh, different different uh, reagent for each group and one among was lime so uh, these uh, sailors were later known as slimies so what happened was people uh, the group uh, were getting lemon and were recovering in two to three days compared to other groups other groups were not required properly during the study period so he found out that uh, the agent within the lemon could cure, could cure the scurvy disease so this was one of the first experiment happened in science so then the uh, smallpox experiment by edward jenner he invented smallpox uh, vaccination so this was uh, it was uh, believed that during his time people who are infected uh, with the cowpox is uh, known to be having immunity against smallpox infection so it was believed that in those times so he wanted to experiment on it so what he did was he took a small pus from the lesion of a cowpox which was uh, his uh, maid was originally infected with cowpox so he took small lesion from the cowpox uh, lesion a small pus he took from the cowpox lesion and injected into a boy uh, he made a wound and injected into it uh, in one week period after this inoculation the boy was having symptoms uh, fever and other symptoms but after one week he was completely recovered uh, he found out that the boy got the immunity uh, then again to check whether he got immunity against smallpox again he inoculated a lesion uh, and swab or a specimen collected from the smallpox lesion and injected this lesion to the boy but the boy was uh, not having any smallpox uh, disease and he found out that the boys got um, smallpox immunity by uh, inoculating cowpox lesion that was a landmark study and which uh, created the vaccination so this was uh, edward jenner did, did in 1796 so smallpox now smallpox is completely eradicated from the uh, world just like polio so these were experiments uh, done by scientists so we'll go to the experimental design the true experimental design is randomized control trial don't get confused with root canal treatment this is randomized control trial that is the true experimental design experimental means we have to do an experiment not just observing the uh, james lynn did experiment he gave he intervened with uh, lime water mm, the jenner intervened uh, with the inoculation of a cowpox 
calculation <laughs> but in descriptive study there was no role from the investigator was just observing so the experimental study design the true design is randomized control trial the true experiment we were seeing just now that not randomized control trial because randomized control trial means the group should be randomly distributed or randomly allocated there was no randomization in both the cases it was just a pioneer experiment so nobody knew what is randomization or nobody knew the necessity of randomization and the control means there should be a control for the comparison then only we can test the hypothesis so just like is control report study they have a comparison group we also need to have a control group and this is the uh, third letter t t for trial so this is a trial trial means an experiment investigator is doing experiment so here in true sense a true experiment is rct so in rct the first letter that is patient will be randomly selected we can select non-randomly in uh, james lind experiment it was non-randomly selected and we need to have a control or placebo group in James Lind experiment, all the other groups who were getting um, uh, other than lime water were controlled. He kept it for comparison, then they can prove it. And uh, intervention that is trial. So these three letters indicate the true experimental study design that is randomized controlled trial. The other one is quasi experimental design. There is no randomization and there may not be control group. So this is also an experimental design so we can say that all experimental studies are not rcts if it is to be rct there should be a randomization of participant that is allocation into uh, two groups and there should be a proper control then only it will become an experimental study design anyway it is trial if it is a non-randomized or randomized it is a trial because it is experimental design so basically we will see the uh, steps of um, RCT. So the steps of RCT. So these are the steps of RCT. First, we need to write a protocol. We need to write it. We need to submitted if it is a uh, study just is planning to be conducted in india you need to get a uh, proper approval from the uh, trial registry clinical trial registry and also you need to get approval from uh, icmr that is indian council of medical research otherwise you cannot do a proper rct even if you do it will not be published uh, anywhere so first you need to uh, make a proper protocol then you have to find a population where you want to conduct the study then from the population you need to uh, take your sample population because the reference population will be very huge if you are doing a study on uh, toothpaste efficacy of toothpaste you are going a school for to conduct a study entire school children will be your reference population so from the reference population you have to select a 50 or 100 students uh, as your sample then you have to do the inclusion or uh, exclusion criteria that is, uh, you have to see whether they match your criteria, whether they belong to the this age group, whether they have this much uh, caries or they have these criteria. If they are not matching with your criteria, you have to exclude it. So you get a sample, then you have to do the randomization. That is the most important part of uh, clinical trial. You have to randomly allocate participants into experimental and control group. So you may take a cheat method or you may take a lottery uh, that is random number method. You have to allocate participant into experimental and control group. Then you have to uh, do the translation or intervention that is giving toothpaste uh, to each group. That is different different toothpaste or you giving only one new toothpaste which you are trying to prove in one group and the existing group in other group. And you have to follow up for a period of time depending upon the objective of your study and finally you have to do the assess, uh, assessment of outcome and you have to um, say that your hypothesis is true or false or you can say that this is uh, efficacious than the existing one or this is not efficacious so this is the basic uh, steps of an experimental study 
so let's see the protocol step that you need to uh, write about aims and objectives uh, what questions you are going to ask and the criteria of selection of uh, your participants and uh, sample size how much sample you need to um, collect and the procedure how you are allocating the subjects into two groups and what treatment you are applying and how you are applying and what are the procedures so all things you need to write in your protocol and this protocol is always uh, helping us to prevent bias so bias will be dealing in future classes so bias is nothing but error so it helps us to reduce the error okay second is a reference and experimental population so reference population as i told you it is enter school children and from the school children we select uh, depending upon our sample size a small population that is our experimental population it depends upon the objective study so the target this is the entire school children from that we select a few people as our population so mm, it is derived from the uh, reference population that is derived from the school children total school children so this is the population that is our sample population where the act, actual uh, experiment is going to happen okay so now now next what we do is we uh, divide this sample population into study and control group by doing a process known as randomization so randomization is known as a hard or control trial if you don't follow randomization the study will be less quality it will be inferior quality in a clinical trial so randomization it is a statistical procedure so you ask the participants to take a cheat from a box where you made 100 participants 100 is your sample size you made 100 cheats in a box where 50 will be experimental and 50 will be uh, reference or control group so each participants will come and take one uh, cheat from the box and hand it over to you so you will enter or your assistant will enter that uh, student will go to which group the student will not be knowing so each participants will come and 100 participants will take one cheat so automatically 50 will go to the study group and 50 will be in the control group but the participants will not will not be knowing which group they are being allocated to and that is uh, known as a procedure uh, it is a single blind okay so blinding and bias will come in, come it will come in later classes detailed so now let's uh, see uh, the randomization procedure is to uh, eliminate the selection bias the selection bias, bias uh, error systematic error so bias is uh, nothing but uh, which commonly seen in any search so we divide the group into study and control okay so that is done by randomization so it gives a confidence that the groups are comparable always the group should be comparable otherwise the study result is always flawed you will not get the uh, actual result okay so the like can be compared with the like so always these two participants will be comparable so it is assumed that if you do randomization the groups will be comparable there is no proof for it but it's believed that if you do randomization the two groups will be comparable so what we are getting is by random allocation every individual gets an equal chance of being allocated either okay so each boy has that chance when at until the moment he takes that it he has a chance to be in the experimental or control group so that is the heart of control trial so uh, the next part is manipulation okay so manipulation uh, manipulation is we are if we are trying to find out the toothbrush efficacy in one group we will give one type of uh, toothpaste and another group existing toothpaste and we ask them to uh, brush how many times and it should be uh, followed up so we will explain the procedure and we will monitor it and we ask them to do the same procedure for a particular period of time this is known as manipulation or intervention this is the uh, next step after so next step after uh, randomization so third step is randomization uh, second step is selecting reference population 
selecting reference population and sample population then we are dividing the uh, sample population to study and control group then we are doing manipulation after manipulation you do follow up so if they are using the toothpaste for two weeks of period then after two weeks you check the uh, efficacy by checking using any indices any black indices or gingival indices you can check you have to check it before the study and after the study so the uh, the problem uh, which arises commonly in experimental studies attrition this uh, terminology i had mentioned in the previous uh, class that is lost to follow up you are starting the study with 100 people and you need to follow up and you need to get the data of 100 even after the study but some may not mm, comply with their instructions and some may leave out of the study they have all the authority to leave at any point of the time so uh, you cannot blame the participants for not being uh, adherent to the protocol so uh, if they are leaving out of the study it might affect the power of the study so usually what uh, researchers do is uh, they increase the sample by 20 percentage expecting that 20 percentage might leave the study so if we increase the sample size it will not affect the power of the study at the end so after follow up uh, so attrition is lost to follow up due to uh, inevitable factors such as death migration or loss of interest so finally we do the assessment uh, we take the values and we compare with control groups and we find out which is better and which is uh, bad okay so randomized control trial 